to on today's show. The Dallas Mavericks show you what June basketball is about to be like. I'm Luka Lentich, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now back to the Mavericks. NBA champion. It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome, you're locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day where we let it ride. June basketball. Thanks for being part of the show. We're making Lockdown Mavs your first listen today, where the best way to get help us grow the show is to listen every day. Leave a five star review on whatever podcast platform you listen to Apple, Spotify, etc. Like the video and comment anything below. Comment anything below here, and then head over to Lockdown Kings and Matt George and just say, Go Mavs. If you say anything mean, I block you from this channel and you'll never be able to watch our videos again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Today's episode. Today- is that how it <laughs> works? Uh, if I block you, yeah. If I, if I hide you from the channel or block you from the channel, yeah, I can do that. I don't think the tower works. I think you can do it. I think it's just uh, blocks comments. And joining me, as always, on the post game, the, t- the take Titan. What you got for me, slightly biased? I'm being dead serious. The Mavs play like they played tonight. I mean, we shoot 56% from three. But hey, the moments where they. They're not sleepwalking, and they just are showing up and taking care of business. And over the last couple of weeks, it's great. It's great, dude. Dude, it's great. Is that, that was that was a soundboard. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was. I had a tab open on my computer or something, and I'm like, is there someone else in here? Or? That was Kyrie from his Twitch stream last year. It's great. It's great, dude. Oh, dude, it's great. It's great. It's oh great, my bro. god, the, oh, the vibe great. shift. <laughs> I forgot about that whole saga. <laughs> oh, so good. Today's episode, we'll talk about how the Mavs got a win against the Sacramento Kings, 132 to 96. Jeez. Killers. Spanked them. Spanked them. Spanked them. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how the Mavs shot 56% from three. Was it fluky? Was it completely a fluke? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Luka not having to play any minutes in the fourth quarter. We'll talk about Kyrie going off in the third. We'll talk about the centers being centers. Making Sabonis look like slightly biased, how slightly biased thinks about him. And we'll, I watch uh, we'll, a lot of games. It's we'll, just, just the truth. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about all that and more. Let's start here. The Mavs. The Mavs get the win. They go into halftime. It's 58 53. And you're like, okay, feeling good. Some of the, the some of the keys that we talked about, Mavs had to hold them to, you know, under 45 points in the paint would be an incredible number and that the Kings don't win a lot of games that way. And so you're feeling good. They had, you know, 22 points in the paint at halftime. Felt like you know, the Mavs were shooting well from three, 10 of 18. You're like, all right, oh my gosh, Mavs are shooting well from three. And then you're just sitting there waiting for what we've seen over and over again with this Mavs team in the past. We've seen over and over again, this Mavs team look good in the first half and then come out and just an offensive team just runs over them, just runs over them, hits a bunch of threes, points in the paint, anything. As soon as the Mavs get a little confidence against the team, they used to just run all over them. And this Mavericks team, it feels like their defense warms up. Yeah. Right? Like in the same way that an offense can warm up. You're like, all right, I'm getting getting into the rhythm of my shot. It feels like this defense warms up or the coaches have makes the right adjustments or whatever. And I got to get credit to Jason Kidd and the coaching staff for this game too. This team was ready and this team was ready to go and knew exactly what they needed to do in a game like this, all new pieces involved in everything. Exum hasn't played a ton of games because he's been injured. You know, Derek John Jr. been in and out of the lineup. P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford starting and just got added to the team like three days ago. You've got Kyrie missed 22 games this season. You've got, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. who's been kind of up and down, like very up and down, but mostly down recently. Derek Lively, 20-year-old rookie. You have Luka with a sore Achilles. I mean, this was one of those games where he just put it together and – a Luka-led Mavs team that believes in themselves took went into that third quarter and just, like, beat the doors off the Kings. And that's what a team can do when they believe in themselves like that. Yeah, and the, the reason why their defense is like that is because they're physical now. Like, they're yeah. finally a physical team that, team that will get after you, and they'll, they'll be active in passing lanes, and they'll be active on drives with, you know, digs and 
they'll get their hands on 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 the basketball and that does have a snowball effect where the other teams you saw it the kings the other team starts to get frustrated they start wanting foul calls i mean some of the like the kings were just throwing up horrible shot after horrible shot in an effort to try and draw they fouls yeah they, they completely lost control of the game and that's because the mavs defense pissed them off like it did it made them upset you could sense it you could sense the frustration that they had and it's because they're they're they can play physical now they can play a physical brand of basketball defensively that they've not been able to play at any other point in the Luka era. There are so many great things in this game that we could, I mean, you and I could talk for two hours probably about all the little good things that happened. But one of the keys I thought was Derek Lively's defense on Demonis Sabonis in the third quarter. Lively played seven minutes in that third quarter and he wasn't like, like he, there was a, there was a big run and he was only a plus six. So it wasn't like he was out there during like a huge run or something like that. Uh, PJ Washington was plus 17 in the quarter, Luca plus 16, for example. But I thought his defense on Sabonis and just keeping him away from the things that he wanted to do from, you know, he, he lively got totally owned on a P <laughs> Demonte Sabonis pump fake early in the game. And one of the things I've talked about Derek lively about a ton this season is his ability to take in information, and then completely learn from it the very next time. He never plays a team the same way the second time. He always plays them better the second time he sees them because he learns from what he sees and he goes on. And I thought his defense against Sabonis just took the Kings out of what a, a lot of what they wanted to do. In the first half, they would dump it into to Sabonis and he would kick out. He had, what, eight assists in the first the first half or whatever. And, man, he just, he just stopped them, stonewalled them. I mean, Sabonis took two shots in, in that third quarter, and he's not a guy that – Takes a ton of shots, but still, I thought that was just a small thing that I think changed a lot of the momentum and changed a lot of uh, the Kings' game plan, basically. That genuinely might have been the best quarter of his career, honestly. Mm. Like, offensively, I don't even know how many points he scored in it, but... <laughs> it doesn't yeah, matter. De defensively, I mean, that was just stonewalling Two. him. Two points, four rebounds. <laughs> That's that's one of the biggest brutes in the league, Sabonis. You know, he's big, yeah. he's physical. He's got he does have good foot. I know I've like trashed Sabonis a few times on here, but he does have really good footwork <laughs> and good patience. Like he's he's a force around the rim. Yeah. And I mean he got stonewalled by Lively, this 20-year-old lanky rookie center who early in the game, I th I thought I was like, I don't even know. I don't know how much Lively can play in this game because he bit on a few of those pump fakes and in some of the dribble handoff stuff. He just looked. He just looked a little bit lost. But that's just the Kings. Whenever they're doing that, execute at a really high level. So you got to be really on point, and that's tough for a rookie center. Um, but yeah, Yo, that third quarter, Apple man. Jets? <laughs> Dude, these drops are these drops are really starting. Because sometimes I have ESPN open, and they'll for some reason think I want them to play videos automatically, and there'll be some stupid ad. <laughs> This is my favorite lively drop where he says, yo, you, they ask him what cartoon character he would be. And he said, yo, you seen Apple Jacks. Apple. Oh, he'd be the, the cartoon. That's got Apple Jacks. <laughs> yes. Right. That was from summer league. And I still have that one. Cause it's so funny to me. <laughs> Lively's defense. I thought was great. Daniel Gafford. I thought, you know, did great in this game too. And the reason why they can play the physical defense is because of those two guys and PJ Washington, who oh. really had a bounce back, like a huge game, 14 points, hit four threes, hit three, Three out of three threes like set the tone shooting wise at the beginning of this game, which was yeah. massive for sure. And they were all off of what slightly? They were all off of pick and pops. Yeah. PJ Washington setting the screen for Luca, popping over to one side or the other, and Luca getting him the ball wide open. Like I've been calling for, and you've been calling for PJ Washington pick and rolls when they can. And yeah. they ran them and they ran them really well. And 13 rebounds for PJ Washington, too. Huge game. You know, that's that's you got to give some props to the coaching staff because it was almost like because we, we talked about this last night where the Jazz, it kind of felt like we're, all right, P.J. Washington, you can shoot that three. That's okay. Yeah. So if you put P.J. Washington as the screener and let him pop, mm. teams are going to follow Luka, and Luka's going to have two on him, and that's a much more comfortable shot for P.J. Washington. And now he's seen two go down, and now, oh, that corner three I've been missing all season long, I'm hitting that, even though it's a tough contest and close out by Sabonis. I'm hitting that shot now because I've seen two go down, and I'm feeling good. And Sabonis, you're getting a switch onto me and you think it's a mismatch. It's not a mismatch. I'm stonewalling you in the post as well because that's exactly what I do. And 14 rebounds, I mean, whew. It's got to sand things. It's got to it's got to sand things. <laughs> Look, this is a brand of basketball that can win a championship. That's just the truth. Now, couldn't – obviously, you're not going to shoot 56% from three, you know. But you were you were due. We've been talking about Don't jinx them like that. Sure they can. <laughs> All right. I mean it's it's no. poss technically possible, I guess. We well we've been talking about for weeks. Man, this team, they can win games when they shoot 30% from 3. The other night yeah. against the Jazz, 28% from 3 and they win the game. And they hadn't done that 
before these trades at all. They were 0-7 but when they shot 30% from three, and they've been winning these games, and now all of a sudden they were due, like you said. They were due for a game like this. Coming up, let's, ha- let's talk about how they got those threes because Luka created them. He just, he just created them in ways that uh, we, we saw a hard double against Luka that we haven't seen in, like, I don't know, a month, it feels like. Yeah. Let's talk about Kyrie's run in the third quarter because I thought that was huge to set the tone, too. It was literally right on schedule. Uh, we'll talk about all that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. It's what brings home the winning trophy. Also, keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle. Level it up to peak performance like the Mavs shooting. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with all that stuff. And you know that if you're going to order a part for your car, you pick the make, the model, the year, all that stuff. You know that if you pick all those things, it'll show you just the things that fit for your car. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Or you get your money back with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP like Luca of the Mavs get fourth. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Shut it down! Oh, Let's go! Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for jumping in, listening on Apple and Spotify. Subscribe to the subtext if you want to get more bonus content. I send notes during the game, and uh, I'll do a... Uh, I'll do a watch back where I'll go and watch the third quarter and you can watch it with me and we'll have, you know, break down plays and stuff like that. So we'll do all that on subtext. Click the link in the description or text the number in the description on the screen as well. On subtext, at halftime, send sent notes and this, these are my thoughts about everything that's happening. One of the things I said, Kyrie, he had, what, six points at halftime? Yep. Three of seven from the field. And I go... Get ready for a Kyrie Irving run to start the third quarter. Just literally on schedule because these two guys, Luca and Kyrie, can just turn it on whenever they want. They mm-hmm. don't have a green light. Their light is broken because, <laughs> because of overuse. Because they didn't need it. They don't need it anymore. Luke, Kyrie c- came out in that third quarter and scored 10 points in three and a half minutes. <laughs> and the Mavs had a 15 8 run to start the third quarter. They took that lead 73 to 61 and kind of like that was their one, their, their first like big push. Yeah. And they ended up holding on to that for basically the rest of the game. Yeah. Kyrie Irving. It's funny because I went on the Ben Skin show today. Shout out to uh, hey. Ben Skin. Uh, and I, I think I almost said verbatim. Kyrie can have games where he comes out and scores six points on seven shots in the first half. And you're like, where, where, is Kyrie showing up to this game? And then he takes over the second half. But he has that same effect that Luka had in the first half where Luka scores 20, what was it, 26 points in the first half. Two yeah. points for us to get for Luka. It's kind of funny because someone in my chat during the game was like, well, I'm a dumbass. I picked the under on Luka's 32 and a half points like at halftime. Well, they, uh, yeah. they, are, they are still that, but. <laughs> well, hey, not tonight. Winners oh, they, win, oh, no, they won. They won on that yeah, one. If, if they did the under. Yeah. You can do that on prize picks probably. <laughs> yeah. Don't let, uh, j- j- what's his name? Jonte Porter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make picks for Jonte Porter. Just, yeah. But no, uh, 18 points for Kyrie the second half. And he has the same Luca effect where it's like shots start going in and you're like, oh, like this is about to turn into some, not just like hot, but like there is absolutely almost no defense we could even play currently for this like there's no coverage we can even throw at him i saw so rafael barlow is our great draft expert he's literally flying back from dubai right now covering some draft stuff locked on nba nba big board huge for the draft and he posted something this week about two prospects who i don't know their names i'm not i'm not gonna lie at this point in the season uh he about two prospects that are gonna do like one-on-one drills in front like as part of their uh, like draft scouting stuff and a, like a pro day type thing. They're going to do one-on-one drills. And he got in this argument with somebody underneath the, underneath the post about how, what's the point of seeing somebody do one-on-one that you don't even really need to see that. What's the point of it? And Raphael was making the point. Raphael has been around a ton of NBA guys, ton of NBA scouts and all that. It was like, this shows you what you can do one-on-one against the player. Every NBA star can go one-on-one against somebody and everybody, like everybody wants the one-on-one tournament like in the all-star game and stuff like that but there are just certain players that you can just go one on if you can go one-on-one anytime you want anytime literally like this is the difference between a player that can score like a jordan pool that can score 20 points in a game or a kyrie kyrie irving who like will score 20 points every game you know like that's the difference is that kyrie can go one-on-one whenever he wants to and he can 
and if you're going to give it to him, he was going two on one every once in a while because they would trap him and he would find a way to get out of that like, and dribble out of it. And one little thing that Luke and Kyrie have been doing recently that I really have kind of enjoyed the trap is like a trap is coming. And especially if it's a big, like uh, Alex, who was it? Alex Len would come over and try to set a trap. And Luca and Kyrie, instead of like trying to turn the shoulder around and go around the trap, they throw the ball out in front of themselves. <laughs> Yeah, and like go go and get it. It's because like usually you try to go around a trap and you can like mess up your dribble because you're trying to cross over and their legs are right there and there's all kind. Of, they're like throwing the ball out in front of themselves and like they go and get it. And Kyrie did that a couple times in this game. And one of the things he did to cap off that 15-2 run to start that third quarter, he beat everyone down the court in in transition. It was like him versus four kings, and he beat every single one of them. Uh, yeah. So it was, that was a four on one, and he won and that he had one that too. dunk. Oh. Has he dunked more times this season than any time in his career? Kyrie Irving, fifth dunk this season at the beginning of the third quarter. That's his most dunks in his career in a single NBA season. That's kind of crazy. According to basketball re- reference. Hey, that's our power forward. <laughs> that is a callback to our media day interview <laughs> back, back then. Uh, yeah, but Kyrie can go one-on-one with anybody. And yeah. it, it, like, and because of that, he can go off on a run any, at any point he wants. And then it it feels, too, with him. It's like... No shot feels bad ever with him. So even when he's missing shots, yeah. you're like, those, those will drop at some point. And, and if those don't drop for him, then it's just one of those nights, whatever. But those will drop. And then once they start to drop, they're going to drop a lot. It's going to start pouring. <laughs> and he, like, the transition threes where he pulls up quick like that. I mean, when those oh. start going, it's just an onslaught. And the Mavs now have two guys, and they're, they're clicking. Like, Luka and Kyrie, the synergy is just through the roof. I mean, they're, like... This is everything we. This is everything we knew it would be. Like Mavs fans, when the the national media narrative was like these two can't play together, we knew. Like Luca is an incredibly smart basketball player. Kyrie's yes. an incredibly smart basketball player. These two are going to figure it out. And now it's just an unstoppable freight train that I I don't think any other team in the league has. Honestly, like two guys like that. Like, yeah. So I was listening to to Zach Lowe talk about the Suns today with uh, with Steve oh, yeah. Jones. Inc- incredible stuff. They're talking about the Suns. And like, they're talking about what the Suns are lacking in their offense, which is their Suns offense is awesome. Like really, like really good has been really good. Yeah. Hasn't necessarily been great lately, but you know, they've got Devin Booker, they've got KD, they've got Beal, they've got scorers and they've got two guys. Like those two guys can go one-on-one against anybody at any given point. The difference is Luca being able to just create any pass he wants at any given point. And Zach Lowe was yeah. like, if the Suns only had like, they have, do they have one A plus passer on the team? They have all these B passers and he was looking for one. And I was like, this is the difference between the Mavs duo and like the Suns duo, or you go to like, you know, uh, the Nuggets duo. The Nuggets duo has one of those guys that can do that. And they're probably yeah. the next closest one to to Luca and Kyrie. And then it's probably, I don't know, Giannis and I was Dame. Say Giannis and Dame, but they don't they're not even the A plus passers. Yeah, right. Definitely and case. so but that's the difference is that Luca has that. And it's like you if you have all the options in front of you, you can pick which of the best is, is the best option. Yeah. And uh they did it. What did you think about the Kings doubling Luca hard? Because I, I really felt like we haven't seen that in a in a good month, and I felt like the Mavs were rusty early on with it. Well, they don't they don't have the one on one defender. Like if you're gonna we we've talked about I think that's probably the best way to defend Luca is one on one. Hope for the best. You can't sag off these guys. Luca's gonna find them and yeah. it's gonna be too easy. But you have to have somebody that you're absolutely comfortable with picking him up. And you have to know that he's going to like, even if you put that guy on him, he's going to hunt a mismatch. He's going to look for whoever it is on the court. And he's going to say, I want to bring him over to me. It was Fox for a little bit. Um, it, it, Harrison Barnes. He didn't even, when they, when they stuck Harrison Barnes on him, he didn't even want the switch. He was just like, all right, everyone just leave. I'm going to work right now. This is the guy that was getting shots instead of me at the beginning yeah. of my, my rookie season. But yeah, I, maybe there was a little bit rust there early on. Um, I still think that's it's it's that it's how it's just especially when they're shooting threes like this, it's an impossible defense offense to cover. Because what do you do if you're not doubling Luca and he's scoring 26 points in the wow. first half? If the, if they're shooting threes like this, they are absolutely uncovered. Oh, okay, like, true. Like, there's, yeah. there's, there's no way is... we, we haven't we haven't seen them shoot like this at all really since the trade. This was the one, and so I'm curious what it looks like in a, in the next game. Uh, but man, this was a playoff atmosphere, and they came and the Mavs brought it like. They really did. Yeah. No. I, I Yeah. No, no team's going to shoot 56% for th- any team that shoots 56% for three is unstoppable for us offensively. <laughs> it's like that Oakland team in the. <laughs> yeah. Man, I was rooting for them in the tournament. There's no uh, fun co- teams this year. 
You're not a big Zach Eady guy? No, that's not fun. <laughs> uh, North Carolina State's the funnest team. I like uh, the Burns guy. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. would be would be happy with that statement. Coming up, oh, yeah. let's let's talk about the other reasons why the Mavs won this game because there is a bunch. There's a bunch of reasons, a bunch of little things the Mavs did and some changes. we got to give a couple of guys credit that I don't usually give credit to. We'll talk about who they are coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. If you're on Amazon Fire TV, you could be watching us right now on the Locked On Sports Today, Locked On Sports Dallas channels. It's got all kinds of stuff. Amazon Fire, you can get it on your Amazon Fire stick. Again, amazon.com slash locked on fire TV to see all the locked on stuff. It's your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis like this show. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the fire stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes as well, and live TV. Fire TV recently created fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. Just like this one locked on is one of them is uh, locked on at most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more. Keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Again, amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Also want to tell you about Nissan. Nissan has the cars that you can go and take take it a little further. Take it, take it to the next level. Are you somebody that likes to take your uh, adventure a little bit further in life? You should get a Nissan. Check out the Nissan Rogue, the 2024 Nissan Rogue. Perfect for city drives and great escapes. They have the class exclusive. Google built in is your always updating assistant on call for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone fumbling around trying to figure out what it is. It's got the Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store built into it already. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Their lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. So think about what you expected from a full-size SUV. And the Armada changes that. Just something completely different. Picture a rugged 4x4. They can seat up to eight in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger. Tow Tow bigger. Tow bigger and explore further the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Armada, or the Pathfinder and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, NissanUSA.com. Uh-oh. It's not game day, so I couldn't finish that one. <laughs> oh, true. But it, it is uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's uh-oh for one team. It is, it is uh-oh for other teams, for sure. Couple of guys we got to give credit to. I mentioned at the top of the show, got to give credit to Jason Kidd because when he believes in a team, and I've been on this, I think the Mavs can win with Jason Kidd. I've I have not faltered from that, even when I was at the lowest of Jason Kidd should move on. <laughs> the, the Mavs can still win with Jason Kidd, and I think he pulled the right levers. He left Lively out there a little earlier. He pulled Gafford when he got a couple of early fouls. He stuck with Tim Hardaway Jr. That ended up working in this game. Just felt like he pulled the right thing. He played the nine man. Rotation we kind of expected. He didn't go cute and like go small in this game. He stuck with what has been working with the Mavs. And I think he's he experimented a little bit early on with this these trades and everything, but he's found the recipe, I think, for this Mavs team. Yeah, this is I, I'm trying to learn to be a little bit better because I feel like I have been a little less reactionary, but it was a couple weeks ago where I was on the show and I was like, Yeah, it's time to fire a kid and get him out of here. But uh you gotta give props to the coach. I mean, when you go when you win nine of your last ten games and there were some really tough teams in there. You know, when you play well, you have to give props to the coach if you're going to slam the coach and they don't play well. Like, For that's sure. just how it has to work. So, the thing that I've been on is the thing that I learned recently by Jason Kidd is he he's okay with failure. I don't know if you and I have talked about this, but in the regular season, he is okay with a team losing a game if it helps them, like, learn something later, I guess. Or that's how every just, coach is. But, like... He came out and said it. It was like, hey, that's yeah. when, when we became a team. I think he just expects them to lose some of those games and some of those like inexcusable losses. I think he just like, just like yeah. wipes his hands of it. And I was like, you know what, guys, if you want to just F around here, go ahead and F around. We'll lose this game. I don't yeah. care. I'm a Hall of Famer. That kind of changed my opinion on Jason Kidd. I'm like, all right, they're not just losing these games. He's like letting them lose these games, which is a, that's a dangerous game to play because then last season happens. Yeah. And so. True. Yeah, if you want the Mavs to be better in the regular season, an, another coach could probably answer that and be better. But well, they saw these, season, high, these highs when they believe in a team, and when Kid believes in a team, unlike what he did last year, this team can go can go places. Last season, I got a lot of flack for defending Kid, but it was only because I was saying that team stunk. 
Yeah, they did. Like they just did. They were not a good roster. So I get like if if you like I thought last season was bad enough that it could have been fireable. Like if they if they wanted to go that route, like hey, we're just cleaning our hands from this entire season, that would have been understandable. But it, it that couldn't be the band aid fix was firing the coach because the roster was so bad. And thankfully mm-hmm. they didn't do that. So um, we're having a completely different conversation. And thank thank goodness for that. So I'm trying to be less reactionary. We completely are. I'm pr- I'm so proud of you for doing that. They can, also, they, I kind of want them to extend kid now. Five years. Lock him in. <laughs> Do we know how long his contract is now? <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime. I also think that it was very apparent at the end of that game in garbage time. Guess who were the two centers in garbage time that were playing for the Mavs and the Kings? Dwight Powell and JaVale McGee. The Mavs starting centers from last season. Like it's such a diametrically different team than it was last season uh the Mavs center duo has been amazing the other player I think that we need to give some credit to and we gave him credit last night because he had a a really good game against the Jazz Tim Hardaway Jr 8 of 14 4 of 6 from 3 he had 6 assists in this game and 22 points he was so great in this game I thought and locked in and did did little things and it's just we've seen a different Tim Hardaway Jr than we've seen the last couple weeks he was legitimately bad like I'm, I'm not going reactionary with this he literally was not good, and then yeah. he played two games, these last two games, where he's been very good. He's been acting different with his playmaking lately. <laughs> he had one where they, I think it was a ball screen from Gafford, like on the wing, and they were playing up on it, and he threw like a almost a hook. <laughs> I don't want to say Luka-esque pass, but just a no, little no. over it was the a trap. Pe- it was a Pete Maravich pass is what it was. Cause he was. It was like he was watching some old Pete Maravich highlights and was like, let me just throw this pass behind me. Like, like Yeah, with, that's with not an easy pass right there no. out of that out of that uh, trap on that screen. Was it and, Greg Anthony on the broadcast? That was a bad <laughs> pass from Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> you said that? Yes. Dude, they were annoying me a tiny bit. I'm not going to lie. Like Usually I don't say that, but after every bucket, when it was clear and obvious the Mavs were going to run away with this, they were like, well... You know, the Kings have that offense where it's a 26-point game. I'm like, dude, is there six minutes left? I, I was doing that a little bit for a while. <laughs> well, I was too. still worried about it. You know what? Hey, they, it, pump, it, they pump noise into that arena. I'm being dead serious. Go back and watch Garbage Time. I think I think most – is that against the rules or is that just an NFL thing? Well, they – they pump noise like into the Mavs where they go, let's go, Matt. Like they I know, play, but the, they like play the, the little crowd. things. They there are rules. There are rules crowd. to it. Like they can't have lyrics to some of the music things, but like just like pumping crowd noise has got to be against some kind of rules. So we're t- I don't we're- know because the Suns also have some defense chant that sounds oh, so, it's so oh wonky. it's terrible. I can't stand it. And it just sounds awful, but it sounds like the crowd's chanting it. It sounds like it was recorded like with a uh, uh, what was the what were those little uh, clip player CDs things we used to have oh, when we were yeah, kids. Yeah. The little one song, the little one yeah. song, uh, hit clip, hit clips. Yep, I had sound a, like some, it was recorded on a hit clip. <laughs> yeah, I, I had some in sync ones of those, <laughs> but Tim was great in this game. I thought Tim played yeah. really well. A couple of the reasons why the Mavs won this game the Kings, eight fast break points. The Mavs, that's crazy. The Mavs defense, like, tr- like transition defense, was very crisp in this game, and like, well, they could they could turn that on. It also helps when you don't miss threes and you don't turn the ball over. Nine turnovers and the Mavs missed uh, less threes than they made. <laughs> yeah, like that's those are the, where the transition opportunities come. It's very, very true. Very good point. Um, held them to thirty-eight points in the paint. That was one of my keys. The, they're now uh, the Kings are now four and sixteen when they get held under forty-five points in the paint. That's a great job. Very big key, right there. And then uh, yeah, Mavs points off turnovers. Mavs scored twenty-one. That was a big key too. Did anybody yeah. else stand out to you? Exum, I thought his defense was was very helpful. Yeah, I was just about to say, no one played bad. Like, there's no... No one shot was, bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, everyone, great job tonight. Carry it over. Another big one on Friday. Huge. That game on that game on Friday is massive. I will have a uh, an episode with Matt George of Locked on Kings. By the way, go to Locked on Kings and write go, go Mavs in the uh, comments and be nice about it. But man, this is a big this is a big win and a big win because now look at the standings. Mavs are comfortably in sixth and comfortably by by comfortably I mean one game. Yeah, <laughs> like they're not but tied you know, with any. They're not tied with anybody. This and gave you some one- leeway though. Like if you lose on Friday, which you're not going to, but if you did, you're not. It doesn't like destroy you. Just made a Charles Barkley guarantee. I, I told you guys yesterday. You're, you did. You, you called. You 100 percent called this game. They're better. Mavs are one game up on the Kings and the Suns, and basically two games up on the Suns, or a game and yeah. a half up on the Suns because they have the tiebreaker. Uh, they were one game back from fifth with the Pelicans, and they've got the Brandon Ingram injury that they're they're trying to figure mm-hmm. out right now. 
They're a game and a half back from the Clippers, who are not playing that well right now either. Four and six in their last ten. They're eight back of first. <laughs> <laughs> they even have eight games left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think nine. Uh, but yeah, it's like four is is a, is a stretch, but it's not. It's in play. Like if the Clippers keep playing bad like yeah. this. Someone asked me if if it was like a, it would be a miracle, and I was like, yeah. And then I looked at it, and I was like, well, maybe not. <laughs> And a lot of these teams play each other too. So there might be like stretches where, you know, a team maybe that's around the Mavs that we've been rooting for to lose, it actually might behoove the Mavs for that team to win. Mm. Mm. You like that? Yeah, word? I was going back I was going back and forth between the OKC Pelicans game because I was like, well, if OKC win or if OKC loses, then that means Denver is definitely won. And then <laughs> you start like going through the scenarios yeah. in your head. And you're like, but but hey, Mavs took care of business. They took care of business in a big way, made a statement in this game. They've got another one against the Kings coming up on uh, what fr- this this game is on Friday. And yeah. so that's another big one. Take care of mm-hmm. that one. And then then the tiebreaker could be in your hands if you get the conference, uh, if you get the conference, you know, stuff in play and all that. So there you go. I'll be back with Matt George tomorrow, probably Dana Larson on Thursday night. And then Slightly and I will have you covered on Friday for Mavs Kings. Big, big game again. Guys, thanks for listening to Locked on Mavs. Peace out. Boom.